Coming up on today's Airborne, could the Blue Angels 2013 season be grounded? A judge approves Hawker Beach Crafts reorganization plan, and the nominees for the 2012 Collier Trophies are in. These stories and more on this edition of Airborne. I'm Ashley Hale. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. Well, if Congress fails to do its job and the U.S. goes over the financial cliff, fans of the Navy's Blue Angels may wind up singing Bye Bye Birdie. The Blue Angels have scheduled more than 30 events for the second half of 2013, and they may not fly any of them if automatic budget cuts go into effect due to sequestration. This news, according to a brief from Chief of Naval Operations Administrator Jonathan Greenert, and reported by U.S. News. The sequestration deadline had been January 2nd, but Congress pushed the date back a couple of months. Now a second fiscal cliff looms at the end of February. If that happens, the Navy says it would be forced to cut $4 billion from the current budget, and that could spell the end of the Blue Angel season. Among the shows on its Blue Angel schedule for the second half of the year are one in Maryland at Naval Air Station Patuxent River, as well as San Diego, California and Pensacola, Florida, the unit's home base, in November. Hawker Beechcraft said in a statement Friday that Judge Stewart M. Bernstein has approved its entire joint plan of reorganization, paving the way for the company to emerge from Chapter 11 protection. Tom Patton has that story. After saying Thursday that he still had questions about one of the company's subsidiaries, Judge Stuart M. Bernstein said Friday that the company had satisfied all of the requirements of the U.S. Bankruptcy Code. As part of its reorganization, the company intends to rename itself Beechcraft Corporation and implement a business plan that focuses on its turboprop, piston, special mission, and trainer attack aircraft, and on its parts, maintenance, repairs, and refurbishment businesses, all of which are profitable and have high growth potential. Hawker Beechcraft expects the plan to become effective by the end of February, once all the conditions for effectiveness have been met. Upon emergence, pre-petition secured bank debt, unsecured bond debt, and certain general unsecured claims will be canceled, and holders of such claims will receive equity in the reorganized company in the percentages negotiated by the major creditor groups at the time the company commenced its Chapter 11 proceedings. The move paves the way for HBC to emerge from bankruptcy in the second half of this month as Beechcraft Corporation, with Bill Boyster taking the role as Chief Executive Officer. The company's existing leadership team will remain in place, providing continuity and valuable insight into running the business. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. The National Aeronautics Association has released the nominees for the prestigious 2012 Collier Trophy the greatest award in aviation. The award is given annually for the greatest achievements in aeronautics or astronautics in America. Past winners included the crew of Apollo 11 and Apollo 8, the Mercury 7, Scott Crossfield, Elmer Sperry, and Howard Hughes. Projects and programs which have been the recipients of the Collier Award include the B-52, the Polaris Missile, the Surveyor Moon Landing Project, the Boeing 747, the Cessna Citation, the Gulfstream V, the F-22, and the International Space Station. This year, the nominees are the Lockheed Martin Cargo Unmanned Aerial System, the NASA JPL Dawn Project Team, the Gulfstream G-650, the United States Air Force NC-12 Project Liberty Team, the NASA JPL Mars Science Laboratory Curiosity Project Team, Felix Baumgartner and the Red Bull Stratus Team, the NASA JPL Voyager Interstellar Mission Project Team. The selection committee will meet on Monday, March 11th in Arlington, Virginia, and the winner will be announced the next day, March 12th, at the NAA Spring Awards Luncheon to be held at the Crystal Gateway Marriott. The formal presentation of the Collier Trophy will take place on March 9, 2013 at the Collier Dinner in Arlington, Virginia. 
Dine on Avionics has announced the release of Skyview version 5.1 that includes the addition of internal data logging to the Skyview integrated glass panel system. This oft-requested feature enables Skyview to record and restore up to 150 hours of flight and engine data for later retrieval and analysis. Skyview firmware version 5.1 is a free upgrade for all existing Skyview customers. The user data log records the entire state of the Skyview system, over 100 items, and includes all flight instrument data, engine parameters, GPS data, autopilot status, transponder status, time, and more. The user data log exports to a USB memory stick that can then be viewed in common spreadsheet programs or analyzed via tools such as savvyanalysis.com. Customers can download Skyview version 5.1 for free from the Dynon website. Dynon Avionics manufactures avionics for experimental and light sport aircraft. You're watching Airborne, more in a moment. Since its inception, Redbird Flight Simulations has been dedicated to developing new training technologies and processes in an ongoing effort to make aviation safer, more affordable, and more accessible. Consider Redbird's flagship flight training device, the FMX, a superior quality, full motion, feature-rich advanced aviation training device priced with real-world flight training organizations in mind. With standard features that are anything but standard, such as wraparound visuals, a fully enclosed cockpit, quick change configurations, scenario-based training compatibility, and of course, an electric motion platform, the FMX serves up a level of realism that is simply unavailable in other training devices on the market. For more information on Redbird flight simulations, the Redbird FMX, and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne Aero TV, our website or our podcast, drop us an email to news spy at aero news.net. Corporate Angel Network, an organization that arranges free flights to treatment for cancer patients in the empty seats of corporate aircraft, has transported its 42,000th patient. The first patient was flown in 1981. The landmark flight carried one-year-old cancer patient Alexander Hopper home to the Denver area after he received treatment for retinoblastoma at Memorial Sloan Kettering in New York City. Traveling with Alexander was his mother, Andrea Reitzel, who said, quote, Alexander is almost cured from retinoblastoma. The best treatment for a cure was only available by plane. Our burden is lighter because of Corporate Angel Network, end quote. The milestone flight was operated by Ball Corporation, a CAN participating company since 1985. Barry Stendham, director of aviation and chief pilot, commented, quote, it's who we are. We are proud to partner with Corporate Angel Network and the good work that they do. And while as a pilot I love every flight I make, the CAN flights are always the ones I remember most." End quote. The charity arranges about 250 patient flights each month and has received numerous awards, including the Volunteer Action Award. Gulfstream's new G280 aircraft recently set 50 new city pair speed records as part of the company's reliability demonstration program. The 250-hour internal testing program, among the most extensive voluntary reliability programs ever implemented by Gulfstream, served to enhance fleet reliability, enrich pilot training, and improve customer readiness. Of the 50 new city pair speed records set as part of the program, the most notable was a flight from Aspen, Colorado to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and one from Honolulu to Savannah. The super midsize aircraft has established 22 speed records since setting its first in May. Scott Neal, Senior Vice President, Sales and Marketing at Gulfstream, said, quote, Two of these new speed records are particularly significant because they demonstrate the G280's capability to reach the East Coast from Aspen and to travel an exceptional distance." End quote. 
The G280 is certified to fly 3,600 nautical miles with four passengers at .80 Mach with MBAA IFR reserves, some 200 nautical miles farther than the company announced as the program launched in 2008. The aircraft entered into service on November 14, 2012. It's Tuesday and time for Aero Video of the Week. I don't mind. Here at ANN, we always try to involve the complete aviation community in all its variables. And this four minute video takes the viewer on a short flight aboard a hang glider following a dramatic cliff top launch. You'll find it by searching YouTube for hang glider cliff launch with base jumpers at mineral bottom. Juice Plus, the whole food based nutritional brand, has announced a national partnership with acclaimed airshow pilot Julie Clark. The partnership between Clark and Juice Plus is ideal as both parties echo the importance of healthy lifestyle and living life to its fullest. With more than 40 years of flying experience and an average of more than 20 airshow performances each year, Clark has spent much of her life engaging with and bringing excitement to those around her. Randy Matthews, Vice President of U.S. Sales for Juice Plus, says, quote, Julie has used Juice Plus products for many years and genuinely understands and represents what we stand for as a brand. With her affinity for leading a healthy lifestyle and her crowd-pleasing performances, we're proud to partner with her." End quote. The sponsorship kicked off with a complete redesign of Clark's smoking Mentor T-34 plane and uniform, which will prominently feature Juice Plus. Well, that's our program for February the 5th. Remember, you can get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.